Hey, this is Zach from Pouch I want to show you something I made called the Pie Carp. It's essentially a Raspberry Pi Zero inside of an NES cartridge. And I have a RetroPie loaded on it for playing mad video games. And so I'm going to do a quick demo of how you uh, build one. Uh, in the description is a link to a full guide that I wrote step by step. You can build your own and all the materials that you need. Um, I'm just going to do a quick overview here on how it works. So, uh, it's actually a very simple project. You don't even need to solder anything unless you want to. Um, essentially, dust cover here to protect these uh, ports. So what you do is you find an old, terrible NES game, like, ooh, that's pretty bad, or uh, this one. Because you don't want to ruin a good game like Super Mario Brothers 3, of course. So you'll need a security screwdriver, which, um, Nintendo like to use on these cartridges and also their systems. And you'll open up your cartridge. All right, now you can see what I've done here is, uh, we've got a Raspberry Pi Zero, which is around $5 US, which is pretty awesome. Kind of looks like a lot of cables here. That was because I didn't feel like doing any soldering. Um, so down at the bottom here, we have a small USB hub connects directly into the Raspberry Pi with an adapter. Um, you don't actually need the hub unless you want a second controller, which most people do, so you can play with your buddies, uh, because the Raspberry Pi Zero actually only has one USB port, which is this one right here. This is your power. Uh, then you have a micro USB extension, right? Power cable, which goes to the Pi, so you can plug in externally. And then we have a mini HDMI to HDMI adapter because again, the Pi Zero only has a mini HDMI port on it. Um, essentially, you just hot glue everything in there. There's a little bit of cutting involved to remove this bar here on both sides of the cartridge. Um, I recommend that you put all your components on the half of the cartridge that doesn't have the screws, the screw holes, make it easier to uh, assemble. Um, and then basically you'll install RetroPie on the on the Raspberry Pi, and that's a pretty sweet software package that'll emulate your games for you. And then here's a micro SD card with everything on it. Um, doesn't generate a lot of heat, surprisingly. Uh, the area here where we installed the ports, still about 50% of the surface area is actually open, so it actually gets a lot of good ventilation. Um, obviously, if this were the Pi 3 or something like that, then there would definitely be some heat issues, and I'd probably cut some slots or something. All right, well, I guess I'll plug it in. I'm just gonna put everything back together with these security screws. Um, what I plan to do later is find some normal Phillips head screws this size to replace these with, so I won't need this special screwdriver. This thing is only a couple bucks on Amazon, and if you do anything with uh, Nintendo games often, then I recommend picking one up. Save you a lot of time. You can also make your own, basically out of a toothbrush prison shank, where you um, cut a toothbrush, sharpen it, melt it, stick it in there, it'll form but it, uh, I couldn't get that to work well, so I just bought this guy. By the way, the terrible game that I chose to use was the original Back to the Future. Great movie. This game is absolute garbage. As you can see, LJN, they made the very worst games for the Nintendo and somehow got the contract on all the great movies. So uh, no loss here. This is the actual size of what would normally be an NES cartridge, which is, it might be a little bit bigger or smaller depending on how big the game is. A little bit of Jeopardy knowledge for you. There's a lockout chip here, if you can see that. Um, this is what Nintendo used to make sure that only authorized or gold-sealed developers could release games on the NES. And that's why NES games were much higher quality than, say, Atari games. There was actually a video game crash in 1983 that was brought on by tons of, of systems coming out and tons of terrible games being made. And Nintendo was able to pull the whole uh, video game industry out of that. And that's why most cartridges look, look like this. You might also see some that look weird that say Tengen on them. Tengen was a subsidiary of Atari, and they actually had their attorney file a request with the US Patent Office for documents on this chip so that they could reverse engineer it. And they actually got sued over that. And that's how they were able to um, play unauthorized games that looked you know, weird um, and get around Nintendo. So a little bit of Jeopardy knowledge there. The U.S. Patent Office actually changed how they handle, you know, software patents and secrecy 
um, you know, not handing over entire pages of printed out code for things like that as a result of that case, which is kind of neat. All right, so obviously hooking it up is super simple. Got our two USB controllers, so we can do uh, multiplayer. And then plug in your HDMI cable. And then last, you plug in your micro USB cable, and that'll actually power the Pi on. There's no power switch on this thing, so um, you actually just shut it down through the menu system. And now, our Pi will boot into RetroPie. Still booting, there we go. And this is where you can access all your games and play them. And it's awesome. All right, well, check out the link to the guide in the description if you want a step-by-step, -step. and see you later.